Hi, everybody. I don't have fucking time for 617 hours of recording. <laughs> One of the ungodly geeks. I'm Joe. I'm Luke. We're trying this shit again. We're having uh, technical difficulties today because why wouldn't we? I mean, it's only Audacity, our 100th episode. Audacity just keeps randomly stopping recording um, for no reason. Like, I'm not pressing any buttons to make it stop recording. It's just like, oh, well, fuck you. I'm just going to not. I'm just going to stop. Hey, it would be really annoying right now if I just fucking stopped working. Yep. Boop. Like, it's not even it's not even stopping working. It's like someone's pressing the stop recording button. <laughs> it's a ghost. It's that Nigerian prince that called. Oh, phone okay. A yeah. Ago um, now uh, they've hacked into. About. Uh, let me see here because I still have the call log because I never delete anything. Um, let's go. Let's see here. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, I got a call from. Uh, <laughs> What the fuck, Luke? Didn't think it was a video. I got. A, <laughs> I didn't think it was a video. Um, I got a call from a two 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 country code. Um, Mara Maritania. I don't know. Uh, apparently, it's a country in, in West African Africa. Um, and I guess it's the new Nigerian print scam or something similar, where when you sit there and you call the number back, which is what they try to get you to do, um, it racks up shitloads of like, you know, uh, money or minutes on your plan. Sure, yeah. Because. I mean, fucking of course it would. It's a goddamn international call. So, But anyway, how you guys doing today? Hello. Hey, guys. Um, I'm just kind of here doing my normal ranting. But we're going to start off with uh, news of the stupid, as we always try to. Um, I mean, is it is it stupid, though? I mean, it's kind of <laughs> stupid. It's pretty stupid, right? Uh, Luke found us a story this week because um, I've been... Not not necessarily too busy. I've just not been paying much atten- as much attention as I normally would. Um, nearly 40 kilos of cocaine found on a military plane traveling with a Brazilian president. Yeah. Like, that's, that's amazing <laughs> to me, right? Um, I've held a kilo brick of coke in my hand, right? That is a lot of fucking coke. Like, an insane amount of coke. Um, the fact that they had 40 kilos in, like, fucking... Uh, like just luggage he had them in suitcases and stuff <laughs> this is amazing suitcases um uh, I bags, mean, it's about two pounds it's a little over two pounds 2.2 pounds is exactly yeah. what it is yeah um bags filled with cocaine were discovered on a military plane traveling with the Bra- president of brazil at a g20 summit on tuesday allegedly planned there by a brazilian air force member the plane was making a stopover in seville spain before heading to this week's g20 summit in osaka japan where the brazilian air force officer was detained he was suspected of transporting narcotic substances which yeah, uh, which it turned out was, he kind of was. If there was just about any country that is a bad choice to take drugs into, Japan. Japan is one of the worst. Yeah, like they're so um, just stringently uh, just awful. Yeah. Japan, like like China, would China you would end up dead. But yeah, that's like those are those are some pretty fucking bad countries to try to take drugs into. Yeah, no, uh, they're they're so insanely strict, and like I understand, you know, um, sort of, I guess. Like I still don't understand why marijuana is still so stigmatized, but yeah, um, I don't know, man. Uh, it's funny. I just love that this guy was like, you know what? This is the plane. I'm gonna stick all my coke on. <laughs> right? Like of all the planes that he could have. And again, I mean, or maybe maybe it was like maybe the other it was way, the fucking president. <laughs> maybe maybe it was the other way around, and he just stashed it on this plane, and then oh, yeah, for some reason happens. this plane was the one that they chose oh my to fly to the G twenty summit. In, I you know? can imagine this being like a really fucking great um, parody style movie, right? Like airplane type movie, or I uh, fucking you know. Uh, how high, uh, half baked, like this dude's right, right. high, like, oh my god, I got to transfer my coke. All right, there's the fucking military plane, let's go. And he's like, got the wrong goddamn plane. <laughs> this plane's going to Miami, yeah. That, that would be like, <laughs> that would be the plot for a really bad comedy. Yeah, like, exactly. That would, that would be like that comedy plot movie. Um, oh my god. Yeah, I, that's just that's just fantastic though. Um, I love that. <laughs> all right, so forty goddamn kilos. Forty kilos though, like. Like that that's that's a party and like sixty others. I was gonna say a party and a half. No, that's way fucking more, man. It's like ninety pounds of cocaine. You're getting you're getting the entire country high at that point. Like <laughs> I mean, it's I, 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 like an eight ball is is called an eight ball because it's one eighth of an ounce. Mm-hmm. And it's enough to get you going for a little while. 
So you've got one, you're talking about one eighth of an ounce out of 90 pounds. Like, <laughs> that's a lot of fucking Coke, dude. That's a lot of limes of Coke. I'm surprised normally they have the cash value amount in stories. They don't have it in there, but oh my God, that's probably a lot of money. Uh, if it's good enough, it can be between per kilo, between 100 and 300,000 street value. Yeah. Don't ask how I know that. So in hell that might but it all current. depends on how like it all depends on how pure it ends up being. Yeah. And it doesn't say if this was cut cocaine or not. Um which I'm willing to bet it isn't, which if it's pure uncut it's you're, even you're, you're looking you're looking closer to three hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> Google per what's the current street price of a per, uncut kilo of co- per kilo of cocaine. <laughs> So you got 40 of these motherfuckers. You know, you're looking at like $28 million worth of coke yeah, there. Maybe, I, you know. Which, oh my God, that's a mind-blowing amount of coke. Well, that's an amount that would come into Miami. Like on a massive drug show. Oh, I know. Trust which me. Which is why but... I've got to, like, it's it's mind-blowing that, like, it, there had to, something had to go wrong. Or, I mean, maybe it's possible that. I, it's just, it's just, fuck. I don't, oh my God. That's just so fucking, just, whoop, wrong plane. <laughs> Or maybe it was supposed to be unloaded in Spain. I uh, maybe and nobody did. Yeah, uh, they they fucked up and didn't unload it. I that's very very possible. I can imagine the price of cocaine in countries like Spain, any European country. The price of coke has got to be higher, right? Like most cocaine I, is. I mean, maybe produced in South America. Uh, uh, I mean, the, and although it's it's poppy, right? It's the same as no, opiate. that's heroin. Oh, okay. So no, I mean, it's the coca plant. It's the coca plant. So yeah, it comes from it I comes from this cocaine and chocolate them. come from the same source. Yeah, and uh, South and uh, Brazil is one of the one growers. of the, yeah, South America's It's South America's co- where it like originated. So I'm wondering if they can grow it. Like Afghanistan's one of the largest producers of opium in the world, and the Middle East is massive opium producers. So I'm wondering if if they produce coca at all. Africa probably does though. Because I think we get some cocoa from Africa, cocoa from Africa. Yeah, some. I, some one, I, 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 I just wonder what the price over there would be versus here. Because I bet it's a lot cheaper in Miami than it is uh, in fucking Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I mean, yeah, probably. I mean, the shipping costs and trying to keep the stuff fresh. If you got to, you know, what? Uh, yeah. Um, and planes aren't exactly cheap, you know, and shipping Coke via like a ship would not be a fantastic idea. Not that far. No. Um, not even because, not, not just because of like the weight and obvious costs associated with shipping things via a ship, um, but also like moisture and stuff. You don't want, you don't want that shit moisture. That's fucking funny. Oh man. But, um, yeah, I, dude, that's, that's just amazing to me. Like, uh. That's a lot of fucking coke. That's enough coke to set you up for life. Uh, like seriously, man. This is a crack service for days. <laughs> <laughs> no, like that's seriously enough. Uh, just... Wow. Okay, so moving on, um, because we have to. Because if we don't, we'll just keep talking about dumb shit. I won't talk about cocaine. I mean, do you? Not really. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't, that's not really the topic of, of discussion here, Luke. <laughs> um, I do cocaine. I seriously do a lot of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Voxo, the rock and roll clown. That's something I haven't watched in a long time. I yeah, no, get... Metalocalypse. Yeah. Like right now, because um, I start vacation in, uh, so today's Friday, so um, I got to make it through the next four days of work. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. At the end of my shift on Tuesday, I go home and I'm off for 10 days. Right? Mm Because I started a little staycation here at the house because I don't have money. And um, I got three, at least three shows that I want to sit down and try to watch. Mm -hmm. Again, Star Trek, Next Generation, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, and Doctor Who. I want to try to maybe get through all those in the time. Mm Mm-hmm. I have no idea if I can make it. <laughs> um, do nothing but sit there. Fucking do nothing but sit there. Eating and watching. I I don't even know if I can eat. Like I, I might not. You know, I might just sit there and just drink. <laughs> <laughs> and wake up and go, holy shit. 
where am I? And realize I've lost two days to being drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not something I think I've ever done. But you're not 18 episodes into the wrong show. You ended up <laughs> sitting there watching Archer all over again or something. I mean, that <laughs> is definitely within the realm of possibility. Because yeah. uh, I do watch that show yearly um, where I just go through the whole thing again. I don't know why. It's just it's one of those things that the more you watch it, the more jokes you see and, and the funnier it becomes somehow. I don't know. It's funny. It's a show that you can watch again and not be bored of. It's got multiple layers. Mm-hmm. It's like an ogre or an onion. I, mean, I don't know about... It's, it's, it's not quite ogre-ish, but... <laughs> <laughs> what about parfait? Everyone likes parfait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what to say about that, man. Like Figgy pudding. Figgy pudding, there we yeah. go. We're having technical difficulties here, guys. So Once you might, again. You're going you're gonna to hit some jump cuts, and uh, Joe has stopped giving a flying fuck. Um, the video might be a little weird, too. I um, don't know what's going to happen. All right, so I'm sitting here right now. As we're recording, I'm using between 8 and 11% of my CPU. So if this motherfucker bitches again about Audacity competing with other fucking programs over CPU time, I'm punching a hole through Donald Trump's face. <laughs> I was originally going to say my laptop, but I'm like, why would I do that? I like my laptop. It's not my laptop's fault that Audacity's being a piece of fucking shit. So we'll find the developers of Audacity. It's like, there's like 300 people involved with the development of Audacity because it's a free and open source program. (laughs) But hey, you help with Audacity. (laughs) You did a thing. You you made this commit. You inconvenienced me with your free software. (laughs) You you made this commit on February 24th, 2009. (laughs) I'm gonna punch you in your goddamn <laughs> face! Oh my god! If I can start throwing like that, something is something not harmful at them. <laughs> I, so Beans? I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> throwing like whipped cream at them. Like fuck you! Why are you throwing cool whip at me? I don't know. <laughs> because you know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did. All right, so let's move on to our main topic. Because um, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. you know, we talked about Brazilian president, 40 kilos of coke. That's a lot of fucking coke, blah, blah, blah. That was fun. Um, so we're going to talk today, because you know how we do. We, we talk a lot about video games and movies and shit. And so today we're going to talk about... <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> That's the total point of our podcast. Sometimes I mean, we get to them. I mean, today we're going to get to him. Yeah. Today I had an idea. <laughs> because I'm fucking over Audacity just being a piece of shit. Audacity so if this ends up being us. our 100th episode and it ends up being like 39 minutes long, <laughs> I'm sorry. But the frustration that I feel is it's, incredible. We'll start talking for like 20 minutes and you just hear Joe like start to scream and it cuts off. And that's the end of the episode. <laughs> It's just released. There's not, ah! even, there's not even a fucking note on the website. It just says episode 100. Uh. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little explanation. This is, it says something like. It comes up like a week later. <laughs> you edit it. <laughs> I, I say just fuck it. I'm leaving it alone. I'm not doing oh, a goddamn God. thing. Which, you know, honestly, um, we might need to wait depending on how long the episode is. Uh, because you know we're only allowed so much <laughs> upload time with our provider yeah that if this goes beyond in megabytes what we have left i'm gonna have to wait until it resets on the first to even upload it oh god so uh i don't know uh, but anyway well, it's the 28th so uh yeah no the but okay what, here's when the do thing we release now i forgot it releases on tuesday release? okay so i up i will upload it today Oh, so okay. I can set up everything. So the only thing I have to do is fire up YouTube Studio on my phone mm-hmm. and take the video and mark it public so that it pops up for everybody in their sub boxes. If I can't upload it today, I'm going to have to wait until like Monday to even upload it, which means patrons don't get early access. And I, I mean, and honestly, because I work Monday. I can't even guarantee I'll do it <laughs> because I work. And uh, for those who don't know the position I'm in, I'm at work 11 hours a day. Mm-hmm. I only work four days, but I'm work for basically half the day. Um, so all of my waking time on my work days is devoted to eating, washing my balls and working. Like those are the only three things I do on my work days after work. If I'm lucky, I might have like a half hour to an hour to spend playing video games or watching a TV show or something. So it's like... Or you pass out. 
before I pass out, right? So um, that's why I don't do much on my my work days. Mm. Like I don't post on social media. I don't chat on Discord. I don't chat on. I, I don't even chat as much on Telegram. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's unless just unless it's happening at work. Unless downtime. it's happening at work, and I'm making fun of something, or somebody posts something compelling enough in the group chat to make me go, "I'm going to talk about that," which is very rare these days. Um, because when you're at work, I'm asleep, and everyone else is at work too. Right, and so, and then. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Let's move on. You know, I, I will say, though, um, and, you know, filling up time, so hooray. Uh, and now that everyone's on day shift and I'm the only one still working overnights, it is so fucking boring that I'll be like, ha, ha, I have to post this to the group and send and then there's no one sees it for like six hours. So I end up posting like three or four things and just crickets. I mean, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Oh, poor Luke. <laughs> it's sad. It's boring. <laughs> well, come join us on day shift, motherfucker. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. If the position opens up. Uh, right now, as long as third shift sticks around, I think I want to stay on there. Cause yeah, I, no, I don't blame you. everyone on day shift, basically. I mean, a lot of people are fine. Most people are just... just too many people. Most people are cool. Um, there is a lot of fucking customers. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing I would definitely give it. But... You know, that's the front end's problem. I don't deal with that. <laughs> yeah. If, the, if that would be... The, Which is an awful way for me to think, considering the position I'm in. Because the position I'm in, I'm manager of the entire sales floor. But, like, that part of the sales floor, I don't fucking care about. I and it's, like, the most important part of our sales floor. <laughs> so it's like, ah, fuck it. They'll be fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go mix paint. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm going to go mix paint, and then after I'm done mixing paint, I'm going to bring them a bunch of work to do, because they don't already have enough, you know, like, that's basically how it works. Um, but anyway, we do have topics, video games we're going to talk about. Um, this is our 100th episode, we were going to do something special, um, but with the myriad of technical difficulties we've been having over the last, like, I don't know, what, 45 minutes we've been attempting to record, yeah. um... I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, I should care. This is my passion. This is my craft. Uh, but there does come a time where my, my, uh, just my frustration levels are through the fucking room. And you can hear it in my voice. I hear it in my voice. Yes. Uh, but yeah, like, this is the thing that gets me right now. I, I, I gotta say something before we go any further. Audacity gave me an error earlier about competing with CPU time. It's using 14.9 megabytes of RAM right now as it records. And it's using 1.7% of my CPU. My total CPU uses right now is around 8%. What the fuck was it competing with? Yeah. You know? It's like, really? Okay. So anyway, it's competing with itself. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we got video games we're going to talk about. Yeah, um, we figured to talk about uh, since we're uh, we're right at the mid part of this year. I mean, we're, uh, we're pretty much directly in the center. Yeah. yeah like, like. Once we um, hit Ju- uh, July 1st, that is the center of the fucking yeah. year, like you said. So, yeah, we're three days away from – two days away from three days so, away from that. you know, I was thinking about ta- – you know, we figured to talk about the games that have come out this year that uh, we've been into, played quite a bit. <laughs> uh, and there's been a few more than I thought. At first, I was like, eh, I might have like one or two games to talk about. Uh, no, thankfully – uh, this has been a pretty decent year so far for game releases. Yeah, it hadn't been bad. Um, like, Apex Legends released this year, released mm-hmm. in February. And uh, I've never been a Battle Royale kind of guy. Like, I, I, I liked Fortnite's 50v50 uh, thing mm-hmm. that was that was fun. Uh, I never got into PUBG, but it was fun to watch other people play. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the other big battle royale game back in those days? There was another one besides that, but fuck it, I can't remember. Uh, it Call of Duty had theirs this year. Battlefield re- Five released theirs. Right. Uh, all of them kind <laughs> of. Um, Apex Legends, though, I think I think was able to. They, they combined like the gameplay of Titanfall Two almost with with uh, it the was, battle royale it, a battle royale uh, squad formula, which I think worked. It had a lot of benefit in the fact that it combined the um, having different character abilities too, like a character shooter, Borderlands style kind mm-hmm, of game. Mm-hmm. Um, Overwatch, those kind of it, you had different abilities combined with a battle royale game, as well as just for a battle royale game releasing without nine billion bugs. 
yeah. and all these yeah. issues. I mean, re- what, what, what was this respawn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah respawn, yeah, respawn, respawn kind of came out of nowhere too. Yeah, it it completely did. Like not, I, I think I even remember reading that EA didn't even know they were fucking with it. Like EA, oh, and EA I mean EA knew, I'm but sure EA, EA was focused on. They released it at the same time as Battlefield Five, I think. Right. Um, no, it released. It released right along with Anthem. It released right along with Anthem, I think. Actually, I think Anthem came out a little bit later. Um, little, let let I, me double check this. Um, whatever it was, I know it, it kind of. They released it. It wasn't promoted by them. They were promoting the shit out of Anthem. And yeah, fucking Anthem. And then That's the best game this ever. This game ended up blowing up, in part because once it kind of got a little bit of a start. EA did put, uh, and this kind of came out. Uh, people, some people knew it's what was happening. Pardon me, but um, they spent a lot of money on getting Twitch streamers to stream it, um, and put a lot of money in people's pockets. And the hype for the game went from like zero to a thousand in a week, and it became the PUBG killer, the Fortnite killer. Which, of course, um, I mean, I don't, I don't hear it a- got that hype that um, it, caused it, it to get. It didn't. It, um, Fortnite is still what? massively huge. Oh no, it didn't. Ultimately, ultimately, um, it didn't kill it. It's not as it's. It doesn't have as much to it as Fortnite. Like, is is someone who likes uh, uh, likes Apex Legends more? Because I just I couldn't really get into Fortnite. Or Fortnite is has more. They, like they change the game all the time. They have yeah. whether or not you want the the um, skins and all that kind of stuff. They had all that in the game. Apex Legends, other than the char- few characters they had. The game is always the same. Yeah, it's not that interesting. Uh, it, that's why I think it died. It kind of died off really quickly. Uh, and then their first, uh, what do you call it? Um, their when they have their, you play throughout the amount of time and earn more rewards I, after I, paying money. I can't remember. It, they PUBG I, does I, it. I, Fortnite I, does it. Loot boxes? Whatever their their no 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 their um. Seasons? Season. Yeah. Yeah. The, when their first season, everyone was pissed because it was fucking lame. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about, like, the character skins that game are nowhere, it, they're not as interesting as Overwatch, Overwatch's character skins. Um, the weapon skins are pretty lame. Like, no one gives a shit about the cosmetic stuff in the game, so no one really cared to earn the stuff. Yeah. So, even though it made money hand over fist pretty quickly, uh, I think the player base has kind of dropped. And it's why, like you said, Fortnite is still... Fortnite is superpower is, as far as uh, I mean as, as much as I Battle hate to of course it. we all know the number one Battle Royale game is another game that came out this year is Tetris 99 <laughs> yes um, <laughs> like straight up it's uh, it's actually it's actually doing really well according to Nintendo but of course it's Nintendo yeah. saying that it's also free but if it's, you, it's if free you have, if you have uh, the Nintendo Switch Online Switch thing, online thing. Um, and like honestly it's the Nintendo Switch Online sucked but at twenty bucks a year, it's yeah. like, and then the fact that if you have Amazon Prime and Twitch Prime and all you that, got a year, you or got two a year for free. for free, yeah. So I'm I'm fucking paid up until like twenty twenty one, yeah, because I got that for free. Um, so yeah, it's like. It's not bad. It's a free game it's to download. Tetris. It's Tetris. There's like nobody who. It's the most popular puzzle game in existence. Yeah. Of course, it's going to do really well. And honestly, it it can be a fun game. Mm. Like if you think you're good at Tetris, if you think you're the best player you've ever met, go play Tetris 99 and get your ass spanked. And, I think and my, the best play. I did. I got in the top 20 once, um, by just uh, like not attacking a lot. Yeah. Because that kind of gets you attacked. I just att- you know did the attack those who attack me. I think I did attack top or whatever the options are, uh, and I got in the top twenty. I, I I thought I did really well. It's it's a fun game though. It really yeah. is. Oh like, yeah, it, it's intense. Like like for Club, Tetris to be that interesting, yes, it, it's amazing. Like Tetris ninety nine is legitimately intense. Like mm-hmm. you're sitting there playing, like oh, oh shit, oh, oh shit. Like yeah. I'm serious about this too. Like it's not something you would think you would be. You start getting the negative the the bad yeah. blocks from other people and it quickly is an oh shit moment like, oh god oh god what do i do what do i do so yeah no it's legitimately fun though um mm-hmm. so yeah i i will give you i will give you that um <laughs> <laughs> i was 99 game of the year <laughs> I, no um but no there's been some other games that have yeah, what's, released what's one um, this year um uh, one of the games for me was sekiro shadows die twice yeah i've not i've not played the game a lot, um, but the game is interesting. Mm-hmm. It really is. It um, 
Like I, 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 I will say that there are games like Dark Souls because this is a Souls-like game where sometimes it does feel a little unfair. Um, but with those kinds of games, that's kind of account for the fact that you can approach a situation in many different ways. Yeah. And so if it feels unfair, it just might be your approach. Whereas with Sekiro, um, and you can cheese those games a lot. You easier. totally can. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Turtle Sekiro, up. Sekiro is a little less cheese, uh, cheesable. It's it's a little less like, it it never feels unfair. It is difficult. Um, it's a stealth. It's more of a stealth Souls game, but it's very interesting. It's very fun. Like a lot of the bosses are cool, and like the enemies are interesting. Their enemy placements are very deliberate too. Mm-hmm. That's kind of something I like. Um, <clears throat> so if you if you're fucking up, it's legitimately your fault. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing that I really love the about it—the epitome of get good. Yeah, um, maybe even maybe a little bit less get good, and maybe more don't be a fucking idiot. <laughs> like if you see enemies and they're positioned in a way where one is going to see you if you approach from the same way you've been approaching the last nine fucking times, change up your approach, idiot. Yeah, think a little more critically. Um, so it, like I said, it's more of a stealth souls game. I, I love the concept. I love the ways execute it. Um, it does get a little old, mm. but that's with any Souls game, in my opinion. Souls games get old for me after a while. Yeah. Um, I've not gotten too in depth into any Souls game besides Bloodborne and uh, Dark Souls Remastered, but I do enjoy the game. Like the game is fun. Yeah, it really is. And I would I would like to play it more, um, but I'm currently captivated by another game. Mm. So, you know, shit happens. It's understandable. Uh, but it, I, it's something I would recommend if you like stealth games if you like souls games you like sneaking around and stabbing shit in the taint fucking buy it yeah play, yeah. play sekiro that's fun it's, it's hard but it's, it's fun it's, it's um what yeah. i've heard it's a lot more timing yeah the combat is more timing based than souls games soul in dark souls yeah you dodge is you dodge or a parry bigger or, option yeah, yeah this game you have to parry yeah you have to have that timing you, yeah you definitely have to hit your buttons just yeah. right and it's it's so much better to block than to try to dodge, which uh, it was a difficult transition for me. Because it's fucking... Pardon me, because I'm a dodger. Dark Star like, Souls, that's what you do. Like in like Witcher 3, yeah. Like you can parry, and I'm okay at it. Like I can parry and cut a guy in half. Um, but I'm more... I'm more, for some reason, I don't know what the fuck it is, I'm more uh, tempted to do- jump out the way you or know, something like that. I, I hate to go back, but having played a few other games this year and the things, I... When you just bring up The Witcher 3, I love the way going from combat versus a monster versus... Tell me it didn't fucking... No, no. Okay, God. Fine. Joe gave a look to his laptop that made me think it cut off again, and I no, was about no, to I, fucking storm out. I'm sitting out. here, and I'm, I'm monitoring my, my resource users as we go. <laughs> and for some reason, it was sitting at 33% CPU, which is not much, whatever. Yeah. But I sit there, and I order it by CPU, and for some reason, the system's second up 28%. And I'm like, <laughs> why? What the fuck are you doing right now? You're sitting here 90% idle. <laughs> what are you doing? It's Windows so 10. This man. is why I've decided. Like, I have nothing against Windows 10. Windows 10 is fine. It's perfectly stable. It runs really smooth on my mi- gaming machine. It runs really smooth on this machine. <laughs> Except when it doesn't. <laughs> but if this mixer board is supported by Linux, I'm saying buy to Windows on this machine. Anyway, please continue. So I was just going to mention that I love the combat versus lots of people. Like, wait, it switches in The Witcher 3, but we've talked about that game enough. So, uh, well, I, I can definitely tell you um, if you're facing down like three or four villagers in The Witcher 3 and you're no good at the game, you are fucking dying. Oh, yeah, no. But once they you get once you get into that game, you're taking on <laughs> six or seven bandits at the same time. And Geralt is making them look like children yeah. as he's parrying fucking using spells slicing the guys into pieces god damn that's a good goddamn game i Dude, cannot I, wait for uh, i still I cyberpunk st- i still love the executions <laughs> in that game yep i like they are some of the best executions i've ever seen like when he sits there parries a guy kicks him in a leg knocks him down on the ground and just cuts him in half like mm. oh my god that's so cool yeah, anyway we're not talking we're not here to talk about the witcher 3 this is not a witcher 3 podcast no. <laughs> it used to be it used to be it but sometimes anymore. becomes that um, for me, uh, Resident Evil 2, the mm-hmm. remake this mm-hmm. year, blew me the fuck away. Uh, I hadn't, I, my Resident Evil experience started with the first game right. remake on the, uh, Nintendo GameCube. Right. And Which then, was a pretty decent Absolutely remake. beautiful. Um, it looked amazing. It um, played well. It still played like garbage, like I all mean, the Resident Evil yeah, games. Yeah, but compared to the original PlayStation, I'm going to give that it played better. 
and it, that's why same I, style of combat though. But it, I mean, yeah, which it definitely is bad. the tank controls. Yeah. yeah, tank controls have always been awful. But I'm going to say, and it, then aiming up and down. I'm going to say though, if you make the transition from because I I did this. Yeah, from uh, PlayStation. When you make the too. transition from the original PlayStation to the GameCube remake. Everything is just better. <laughs> oh my god, this like, is so great. Even the tank controls, which do suck, <laughs> are a thousand times better on yeah. the GameCube because the GameCube's just faster and more responsive. Mm -hmm. So you're not sitting there pushing the button to aim and seeing your character fucking pull his arm up in like 20 frames a second, you know? Like, <laughs> it, it's just it's, slow, like, oh my god, there's a zombie right in front of me. Put, put your fucking shotgun it. up. Yeah. You know, um, like, like, come on, do a thing. Yeah. But uh, that. I still enjoyed the hell out of the game. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's one of the games I wanted to play because I've been a huge Resident <laughs> Evil fan for a mm -hmm. long time and I just, I, I didn't pick this one up. Yeah. Nope, not because, maybe it's because I was poor. I don't remember. I think it was, some, well, it didn't release, uh, oh, well, it's on PC. It is on PC, yeah. There's yeah. no reason why I shouldn't have it. <laughs> um, But yeah, Resident Evil 2, they revamped everything. It's got the new control scheme, so it's more like uh, Resident Evil 5 and 6, which those games aren't good, but the controls aren't Don't, bad. No, no. Resident Evil 6 uh, is like controls four. were terrible. You're thinking more of 4. 4 and 5. Well, yeah, I know 5, five, five. was similar. I, I only played the demo for uh, 6, so six, I have no six, idea. Six, I thought it was the same. Um, I just know 6 sucks. Okay. I, I didn't... It, but. It's the same in the sense that it kind of works similarly. They made it more it's, like a military shooter. Uh, I do yeah. remember that. Like it, It's like... When you like play the control, Chris. The control... Maybe for me. Um, but I, I played the game. And I didn't keep it long. Uh -huh. I refunded it ASAP. Because I thought maybe from the demo to the game they'd fix some shit. <laughs> um, and this is why I will always hate... Resident Evil 6 is just a, a sore point for me. Because it was, it was slow and clunky and clumsy, oh. and that was a problem. Like, the controls were not... I do They were not responsive like they were in 4 and 5. From what I played, they one thing that they tried to do, and it didn't work was, very well, was they had three different control types for the three different playable characters. Leon did his kind of slower aim over the shoulder... Uh, Chris was like a third person military Gears of War shooter and then the other dude was a retarded run around smashy if I um, remember right I um, didn't I don't even yeah, remember yeah playing more, the more of a hack and slash type character yeah and it was awful I, was, I thought it was no, awful that, that was bad I, I just like, remember the Leon section I thought was okay it, it, it it's one of those things that sounds good on paper it looks like it might work really well to have that to mix it up it just it, it failed in execution which it failed utterly in execution going from thankfully they went from that game to seven which was a complete departure first person amazing game and then now with the remake fucking they got it like 100 percent. the yeah, remake is right. fun um it took that that stuff that gameplay that has and even in like Pardon resident Evil 4 took away i will say from the horror aspect of it right because you you pr did feel like you handled every problem pretty sufficiently in the remake of resident evil 2 you there there's quite a few times where i felt oh my god i don't have enough ammo for this stop leave me alone zombies oh my god please oh god why like it that game that, that, that does the horror it does that stress like it's why i'd never i i played through the game one time and it was like yes that was really fun i will not play through that again because i'm not dealing with that stress of playing it through difficulties that's lovely a hundred all the credit to jake for beating it 19 times or however many times he obsessively beats resident evil games uh you know, I, you I know he did at least it. one of those where the enemies invisible and probably knife. like no hud invisible <laughs> invisible enemies <laughs> yeah. knife only you can't use any healing items like <laughs> no fuck Fuck you. <laughs> and the fucking uh, Mr. X is there from the start. Or he's some there, shit he's like just that. stalking you the whole time. <laughs> he's permanently Turns out one he room just wants away. to give you his lunch. He just know. wants a hug. You know, Mr. X just wants a hug. <laughs> oh my god. Did you just, have you seen the mods where they throw uh, uh, oh like god, GTA so characters things. and stuff yes. in? Like, oh my. Um, who is it? CJ and his nemesis from the uh what's your the guy who betrays you the guy who, yes you know, I, get on the damn train gj dude it's been so long i don't since remember I the played those name games. Yeah, fat, like, fat something but yeah like he's mr x <laughs> number and nine, you're playing two, number fours. 
Yeah. And he's just beating the shit out of you. I love, there's one of my favorites. Um, it's like the person's just playing the game, goes down the hallway. Yeah. And then I want to say it started playing a DMX song, <laughs> Where the Hood At. And it's like, it's not one Mr. X. It's like a fucking army of them that comes stomping down the hallway. X is about perfect, to give it to you. In perfect sync to the beat. <laughs> Modders, oh, man. Mods, man. They're the they, best. Modders are the loveliest people on the yeah. planet when they're not entitled <laughs> shit douchebags. Like, they are the... Because they, they make so many silly, so many wonderful things. things. Um, yeah, that game that game was uh, this year one of... Like, it, it's one of those games where I even... For the last, like, year and a half, two yeah. years, maybe yeah. more, when I go to buy a game at 60 bucks... Um, there's a lot of times where my first reaction is my gut feeling like it, it, it's not positive yeah. anymore. That's how bad the industry's kind of gotten where I'm like, ah, is this a, should I just fucking wait? Yeah. Is this a good idea? Yeah. Am I going to uh, even fucking enjoy this? Like it, like that's, that's kind of been my reaction. It's one of the reasons a lot of games I buy are on steam because uh, like you mentioned before, the refund system is great. Yeah. Play it for an hour. I, mean, I got my, I got my refund on Resident Evil say 6. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, and I do that with a lot of like if I just buy a cheap game or right, uh, right. early access and end up not liking it. But yeah, even with sixty dollar games lately, I'm like I, I seriously get this immediate buyer's remorse even before I play it. Um, that's one of those games that, and especially because I'm not usually a big horror or stealth game fan. Right. Yeah. Um. But I like the series, so I, I right, obviously I wanted to I mean, play that. And immediately I was like, no, this was, this is very positive. And then the dog showed up and I was like, oh my God, I never want to play it again. I mean, <laughs> I, terrifying. yeah, when it, when it comes to Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4, I think is like the pinnacle of the series. And if they did a full, complete refresh of that game, the way they have two, I would buy it. Um, that's I mean, just me. That's yeah. my opinion. I like, that being I'm said, the same opinion. That being said, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis <laughs> is still my favorite. Yeah. It just edges out. Resident Evil 4. I don't know why. Um, I like, like when you kill the nemesis in that game, mm. he drops like rare parts to build weapons. And this is the reason why. And this is the stupidest fucking reason ever. Mm. But there's a weapon in there. It's a handgun with a fucking scope on it. Purple, mm. purple handgun. It's called the Eagle or something. I don't remember what it's called. It is my favorite weapon in any Resident Evil game. Mm -hmm. Just do you like it? I just like it. Yeah. So. When I got good enough at that game that I could kill the nemesis at the police station when you first meet him by knifing him and shooting him in the dick with my pistol, and I think I had a shotgun by then, uh, I would do that every single time. I'd get the parts for the eagle, I'd upgrade and, and build it, and then I would use that for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, because I don't know why. It's just because. It's just because. I don't know. Like, the thing is, though, like, I have no logical reason <laughs> or even emotional reason why I like that gun so much. I just do. And so I go through the trouble of getting it. He also drops the uh, Winchester parts, mm. which is just like a, a fucking shotgun that works like a revolver or whatever. Well, no, like it's, it's old lever Western action. shotgun. Yeah, old re lever action Western shotgun. Uh, so you like shoot it, she swings it around and reload it and shoots it again. Like it's... It's, it's like uh, the the it's the like from uh, Terminator. Yeah, too, Judgment Day. He right. uses a lever action. And if you it. if it's you so defeat cool. him, and here's the thing that I don't know how many people know this. I'm sure by now a ton of people know this. Yeah. But if you beat him at every chance you every every encounter with him, the last when you fight him in the church, he drops an infinite ammo case, yeah. which when you combine with a weapon gives that weapon infinite, infinite ammo. ammo. Nice. So yeah, it's like Resident Evil's. I, that's one thing I do give credit. Capcom does a lot of shitty things when they make games like their Resident Evil, their core. The, the, those games, yeah. they put a lot of those little secrets. They put a lot of like, yeah. beat the game on this, get these items, this extra, blah blah blah. It, it, they make replay value in their games yeah. really well. Even though I wasn't going to go through the stress of that, I know Jake had a blast getting the infinite pistol and you know all the different other things. Right. Yeah. Um, and the character. Uh, different characters you can play as and stuff. Uh, I I just I wonder if I don't know how much I want to see them remake their other games. Right, like they could. I mean, I'm just they saying. could start with three and remake three in this. But I'm I'm I, now I, I want a new I want the next step right. in the series. You know, I mean I if they're gonna continue 
pardon me, on the remake train, mm -hmm. I would happily take a Resident Evil 2 style remake of 3. Yeah. I'd fucking be totally on board with that. Add all the scary shit, too. Like, add all of that, because Nemesis is one of my favorite games. Like I said, it's my favorite Resident Evil game. Yeah. Just barely edging out 4, because 4 is, like I said, I feel perfected that style of Resident Evil game. Yeah. And I love that style of Resident Evil game. Um, well, I love that game. I don't like that style of the game because the ones that followed it that tried to follow that style were not great. Yeah. Uh, um, this this takes that, and I don't... Did you ever play the... Um, what were those games that came out? Uh, the... Shoot. Um, do, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. Well, they came out... Like, I know there was a 3DS one. Oh, they um, eventually Mercenaries? came out. Uh, no, that one was terrible. Are they are they separate? Are they the Resident Evil games? Right? Yes, and they continue Resident the story. Evil I know Zero? you play as Jill. Uh, no, they were the newer controls that came out after five and six. I think I have no fucking clue um, what you're talking about, man. That's, that's I uh, keep wanting to say Code Veronica, but that's not not it. No, that's an older game, um, and that is also fantastic. okay. Well, you obviously didn't play them, so they continue that style of game, and they were made episodic games, which I played the oh, first um, one. Yes, uh, Revelations. Revelations. Yeah, yeah. I played the first one, and it's pretty good. It's good. It's it's better than I. I almost bought those on Switch. I bought the I, I bought the collection on PC a while back when it was yeah. on sale. There, I didn't beat them all. I still need to go back and play them eventually. But I say that about a lot of things. On my PC, yeah, no, um, on my library. On I mean, Steam. I'm sitting there. I've got like 250 yeah. games, and it's like I want to play that game. And then cue me playing Bloodstained for 10 more hours. Yeah, exactly. So they're those are good. They they kind of like i sometimes even forget those games existed yeah uh and i'm just like oh fuck capcom blew their ass after six and and they didn't make anything good they did they, they kept revelations kept doing, yeah um, they were they good released Resident two Evil episodes games. of revelation yeah and uh, they were great apparently and then and then they released um seven and i i i don't know if they continue from seven after going back to the remake of two yeah and how good it is i don't know if like, you could continue that story from seven, all right? Seven, it was good, and then the ending com uh, leans into Umbrella, and you have um, Chris show up and things like that. Is seven like a prequel? It's like a reboot. Okay, so it's a soft so, reboot. So, so throughout, kind of like how Doom twenty sixteen is a soft reboot of Doom franchise, sort of. Yeah. yeah. So the way that game works, uh, uh, honestly, it, I would say maybe Doom's a reimagining of the original. Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's so this game, it has uh, for when you're playing it, you only get a couple hints. Yeah. That it's in that even in that world, because there's no mention of Umbrella and things like that. Right. What you find out is it is a, a, a corporation that created and used some something. to right. I, And I can't remember what I know it's listed in there to create the child that ends up being the the the, the viral thing. Right. The right. little girl who's creates the creepy mutant shit. thingies. Fuck, yeah, yeah, the creepy shit happens. Um, and they took, actually, they took, a, I think they took a lot of inspiration from the fear games because, well, one, it's a creepy child and there's a lot of times where she'll show up and do things where you, there's nothing you can do. It's like a cinematic almost. Right. It just happens or you have to just run away um, rather than fighting it. Because uh, the first, there's a long stretch of that game where you do not fight the enemies. You fucking run because you have nothing. Uh, it's almost like an outlast for a, a little while, and then you get weapons and you can fight stuff. Um, and it has awesome fucking boss battles, like Resident Evil style boss battles. Right. That it it ended up being a great game. So the end of it, you find out that Leon Kennedy, or not Leon Kennedy, Chris Redfield, um, and Umbrella are oh, spoilers for Resident Evil Seven. Oh yes, yeah, sure. I haven't it's, played it either. It's, it's a while, but, but I don't care. But this is the connection to the, rest the, of the game. typical Resident Evil story. Yeah, is Chris Redfield actually works for Umbrella as they are running the anti biological weapon task force. Um, he's reluctant to work with them, so they have a bad history. Of course, it does not say specifically if umbrella caused like a raccoon city incident i don't think i don't think it ever mentions a raccoon city inc incident but he doesn't exactly trust umbrella but they are they are now running the anti-biological and they're they're, they're seem to be legit 
Like, yeah, yeah. They tell him, you know, he's destroying it. He's not capturing. He's not taking anything. It's it's all about destroying the virus and all of the right, the parts right. of it and stuff. So it's almost like if they continue that story, obviously, I assume they'd make Re- Umbrella evil. But it's it, that's really the only connection it has. It's like a, almost a new story. Right. So okay. I, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty much down for it if they did. Right. Because I liked it. And the the DLC where you play as Chris, which was free, turns it into a first person shooter. A little bit more. It's not quite like run and gun Call of Duty style. You have you don't have in, like a lot of ammo and there's not a lot around. So you still have to pick your shots and stuff. Right. Uh, but. And it's more still like a, a horror. More like a strategy shooter. It's yeah, than strategic. Uh, it's still a horror game. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, I I could see them continuing that, but after going back and doing two again and getting in that mindset, I I don't know. It's like I think you go back and you start like if they rebooted it or soft reboot. I yeah. think you start from like Resident Evil three. Yeah. And continue forward. Uh, like if you did a remake of that and then you do I mean an um, all new Resident Evil quote unquote four. Uh, like the way three was, it was it it was three in the series, but it was actually a sequel to the first game. Yeah, because it happened at the time. Uh, it, it it basically tells you what happened to Jill after leaving the mansion. Like yeah. what Jill did after that. Because it stars Jill and mm-hmm. Jill is probably my favorite uh Resident Evil protag. Uh, Leon right there behind her because she's just cool as fuck. Yeah, like, but uh, yeah, until I, they I fuck see her it. up and until they fuck her up. But um, <laughs> well, it's just like what they did with like Samus and shit with other M. You know, it's, she's a strong female character and they fuck her. up. Oh, I just mean where they turned her into a, a fucking. Oh yeah, I guess it is similar. They turned her into a goddamn slave to uh, fucking. Yep, yep, yep. Whisker. All right. Anyway. God, Resident Evil Five was terrible. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> so um, yeah, what's uh, what's another one from you? Oh, uh, for me, um, and I I talked about it a lot in the last podcast, but it was definitely it's definitely Bloodstained. Yeah, Bloodstained is probably my game of the year. I think. Um, I don't know. I love I love Metroidvanias. Mm-hmm. I really do. From Castlevania Symphony of the Night on, I've played as many as I can get my hands on, and there have been many games that have been in that style that have worked so well. Like, you know, I gave Hollow Knight such high praise because it's, it's a Metroidvania-style game. Mm-hmm. Um, I've given... And I do love that game. I haven't played it in forever, though, because I'm stuck on it, but that's fine. Um, of course, so something like Dead Cells, mm-hmm. which I enjoyed because, you know, it took the Metroidvania idea and sort of mixed it with roguelike. Mm-hmm. So permadeath and all that shit, but you get to keep your big important upgrades, which I loved. Um, but, like, Bloodstained is literally... Symphony of the Night modernized. Yeah. You know, everything looks beautiful. Everything looks gorgeous. Don't buy it on Switch. But apparently right it's going to have oh, some it's, problems. It's terrible. Like, I play it on PC, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and I, I get the buttery smooth 60 frames a second mm-hmm. all the time because my PC is a fucking beast. And the game doesn't actually take that much to run. Yeah. Like, I can render a video in the background using 60 to 80% of my CPU and GPU. And I can still run Bloodstained mm-hmm. at all max settings, epic settings, I think are what they call it, mm-hmm. at 60 frames with a few dips here and there for obvious reasons. Um, Switch, I don't know what it is, but it runs at like 15, 20 frames. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really, it's... It's, it's just a bad port? Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. Like, it runs. You can play it. It's ter- it's definitely playable. Is that both docked and undocked? I haven't tried docked just, yet. Okay. I've only played uh, handheld so far, but um, they're working on it. Like, I have faith that they will get it fixed. Mm-hmm. Like, they did with, um, like, Hello Games, they would No Man's Sky, shit like that. Like, I do feel they'll get it fixed. Um, but if you have a decent PC from the last five, six years... You can play the game no problem yeah. on PC, and it is really a fantastic experience if you're getting into that kind of game. I totally am, mm-hmm. and I've gotten much much deeper into the game since last week. You know, I, I've completed the game. I've got 100% map clearance. I've collected all the shards. I've collected. <laughs> uh, I've found all the enemies, of course, mm-hmm. and like it. It, it Metroidvania have always been a love of mine. You know, you combine Metroid, which is one of my favorite games of all time, that Metroid series. I've loved every single Metroid game I've ever played. 
<laughs> and you add the Castlevania elements into it, the fighting and the way the the fighting mechanics and the way it works, and you combine the two for some reason it just works so well. I love the idea of fighting an area I can't get to, coming back to it later when I'm stronger or have new abilities and getting to it. I it's just a massive map to travel through. Yeah, like a, just a locations. big big area, and and that's yeah. one thing I love about it. It is Castlevania to its core. Because there's so many different environments, you know. You got you got the, you've got of course the castle entrance. You got a little village you run around in. You've got, you know, the grave. Well, this one doesn't have much in the way of a graveyard. <laughs> that's half the time the it. starting location, <laughs> right? Castlevania. Not so much here, huh. but that's fine. Yeah. You know? But you have of course like a cathedral. You have a library area. You have this one. Um, I I kind of like the way it approaches it. The library area. Is is more of like a, a steampunky uh, mm. clock tower type area too. Yeah, um, and then of course that. there is an actual tower. Yeah. It wouldn't be a Castlevania type game without a big fucking tower to climb up. Um, and then there are newer areas. Um, like there's an area called the Garden of Silence where you just encounter just normal garden you know, toads and shit like that. Guys with bows, plants that try to eat you. <laughs> And then there's a later area, which is basically that area blown up like four times in size. Ah, okay. So it's like, whoa, this is Giant cool. toads. Giant like everything. That. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, cool. It's like, this is really fucking cool. I like this. Um, and that's endgame. That's post-endgame area, mm -hmm. um, technically. But I've gotten all the endings. Yeah. I'm working on getting all the weapons out. This is a game that I want to play in 100%. Yeah. Before I do anything more. <laughs> and... Um, and since it's a Metroidvania style game, there is tons of replayability. Yeah. Like that's one of the things I love about these kinds of games. Like like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, dude, I've played that game all the way through 80, 90 times easily. It's one of my most played games. It's one of my most replayed games. I don't know what it is about the game. I can beat it in like five hours, but I want to keep playing it. Yeah. Because I'm going to keep playing it over and over again, despite the fact that I've approached it in every fucking way I can think of. And that's one of the things that you can do with this game. Because you can play ranged player. Like, that's. I actually have a set of gear for hunting items and, so, and shards where I just shoot shit. <laughs> because it's easier that way. And, like, the guns are really cool. Like, the, like one of the guns you can. It has homing bullets. <laughs> it turns any whip bullets you load into it into homing bullets. And they're not great. They're not perfect. Like, they don't go, whoo. But they, like, shoot off at angles and try to hit shit. It's really yeah. cool. Um, I don't know what more I could say about this game. It's just fantastic. It really does live up to that, uh, to the Symphony of the Night, which oh, is still one of the greatest games. Like I said, don't buy it on Switch. And there are some. That's disappointing, though, yeah. a little bit. I, was, I, I bought it on the PC already. I right. probably wasn't going to buy it on the Switch um, unless that I heard that the mobile version the, the the undocked was really good um i so, mean and hopefully they'll i i get to play it, it. i've had to play it docked so it could run much better because obviously there's more processing power available yeah um so i've yet to actually sit down and do that it sounds less like because I, I can't imagine that game is that hard for the switch to run i just it sounds less like it sounds like it just wasn't optimized very well for the switch i, I think that's part of what it is um because on their back on, on the uh, Kickstarter backer forum, they're still posting updates and stuff. And the last update was I don't know five, four or five days ago. Yeah, really, really recently. And that was one of the things they were talking about was optimizing it. You know, fixing some enemy animations and fixing some environmental stuff and trying to improve the frame rate and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I don't know what it is that would stop it from running. Mm -hmm. Like I know what the Tegra X1 is capable of. I I see it like in a, it action. It sounds like a bad port. It sounds like a bad is. port, honestly. Considering that, like, I, I would argue that there are way more graphically intense games on the Switch. Yeah, I'd say Breath of the Wild is one of them. Breath of the Wild is definitely one of them. Yeah, um, and that can run on a pretty stable 30 undocked. Undocked, yeah, at 720p. Granted, mm -hmm. but still. The fact that someone's getting The Witcher 3 running in 540p at 30 frames a second pretty consistently, like, okay, what are y'all doing? Yeah. What have you done that is, like, this game is not that intense. There's no way this game is that intense. Uh, and, and when you consider things like, like, the opening area is on a ship, and it's raining all the time. Yeah. And on the Switch version, I've noticed that the rain, the amount of actual raindrops that fall... Mm -hmm. 
has been cut down to like i would say maybe 30 percent of what i see on the pc at max settings so it's yeah. like and it's still lagging it's still laggy like that's like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I get cut down the rain to give me better. No, frame absolutely, rate. yeah. And, like, but dude, take the fucking rain better, away. I don't even care. Yeah, but you're not getting that better frame rate. That's yeah, kind of frustrating. So like, uh, like, so I know they've made some concessions. They had to. Yeah. Um, but that that makes me sit there and think like they were originally going to do a Vita port, and you've got the Switch here, which I'm holding, which is like 30 times more powerful than the Vita. I'm and you can't get that a Switch port probably right. like they probably changed that idea well yeah they did long before the game was even close to what well, it is um, now when sony announced eol on the vita um they said fuck it we're gonna put it on switch then so instead that's what that's what they did yeah um well i mean because i mean there's that first version of the game that nobody liked that they scrapped yeah um so. Well, it was less that nobody liked it, more like there were a lot they of things wrong with, with it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they they kept that version of the game and just improved it based on what mm-hmm. everybody was, all the feedback they got. Um, it, it, it's a little bothersome. So don't buy it on Switch right now. Yeah. But if you got a PC, you got a PS4, you got an Xbox One, totally buy it on those platforms. It it. Especially PC, if you got a decent PC, it run, it's so beautiful. It really is a beautiful game. Everything is beautifully modeled. The environments are gorgeous to look at. There's lots of color. Even like in the drab areas, there's lots of color. You know, yeah. like the Garden of Silence, the place I mentioned before, is kind of a grayish area because it's a dead garden, and it still looks nice. Yeah. You know, uh, that's something games need more of is color. Yeah, lots of color, and it goes well with a game like. I this. mean, yeah, it do- totally helps with this game, like in general. I, I love the game, mm-hmm. uh, and if you like Symphony of the Night, you should totally check this game out. Um, I, I will continue praising this game. Um, like I said, they do have some problems. There's some translation errors. There's some localization problems. Mm-hmm. I, I don't expect any of that to be perfect. Like, there's still like, there, there's going to be areas where they'll be talking and no text will be displaying, or there'll be text displaying and that's not what they're saying. <laughs> but like those are minor things. Yeah. And but, like that's all made up for by the fact that the game is very tight. The controls are precise. They're fantastic. Uh, everything comes together. Combat is is great. Um, there are some difficult areas. There are some bullshit bosses. You will encounter that. Like, I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. But that's that's the spirit of any game like this. There's lots of really cool abilities. Because like, I've gotten much deeper into the game now mm-hmm. than I was when we talked about it last week. And like, there's an ability that lets you just warp. Just teleport across the like called dimension shift which i'm not going to do much more than that because there's, there's a, but there are a number of areas and things that you can't get to until you get this ability mm. and literally just you put your hand out and the little orb pops up and then when that orb is white you can hit the button and you'll teleport to where the orb is nice. so, so yeah it's like it's really cool i love that ability there's like i said there's one that turns you into a bunny demon because <laughs> why not fuck it why not um I like so, yeah. there. There are areas that are secret. There's lots of secret rooms. It lives up to that. It does. It yeah. totally does. I like. If there was anything that I could personally add to it, as it sits right now, I I would to just add to the replayability. Which, by the way, on the one save file I have on my PC, I've got like 36 hours of play, mm-hmm. and I've not. i yeah, that's it. But. If there's anything I would add, I'd like them to do the SOTN thing and give us an inverted version of this castle to explore and give us like another ending. Because right now there are three endings. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you the endings. This one's bad, one's worse, and then the good one mm-hmm. um, with the plot twist and all that with the good one. There's a plot twist. Of course there is. Yeah. Um, I, I would want maybe one more ending and an inverted version of the castle to explore Mm -hmm. just i don't know why but that that would work so well for me give us an inverted castle just to have more to play just have more to play more to explore more to run around in and you know give us some new enemy types which i know there's still more dlc that they have planned more stuff is coming Mm -hmm. like there's another there's supposed to be two more playable characters from what i understand which is going to be neat and then there's supposed to be uh some bonus stuff i don't know where you can fight a a hidden enemy which is in the game right now but i guess you can't get to him because it was only released to backers and it releases to everybody else on the third 
it's kind so, of cool. Yeah. It's it's one of the things I, I hope that it works out when they release all that stuff. Um, because right now it sits as like a kick a success story for a Kickstarter game. Um, but then it goes into those stretch goals and things that they made and can they deliver on that stuff? So I so think they can because I mean hopefully they manage, especially now that they've got you know they're selling the game, so they're getting that that funding in if they needed the help, and they didn't have to fucking do the bullshit of going early access or anything like that, like some games do. Yeah, which they totally didn't. Like I yeah. love that. Although I mean, I guess didn't you could... sell out to a publisher, didn't yeah fucking switch to being an exclusive to Epic Gearbox games. or Epic. Yeah, Any stop saying Gearbox. Shit? I know. All right. Uh, we've hit an hour. Do you want to keep going? I just the, the last game that I'll mention um, that has been my guys. We somehow made it to an hour. I know. Audacity, well, we started bitch. talking about shit we like. Um, no, no, without audacity, bitch. Oh yeah, no. Um, because so, considering that it fucking stopped the first time after twelve minutes, it stopped a second time after three seconds, it stopped a third time after like ten minutes. Yeah. I'm fucking over this, Luke. Uh, the only the the one other game I'll mention because it's been pro- my. Other than Resident Evil 2, this game has been one of my favorite games to play this year is uh, Metro Exodus. Uh, of course, getting it on um, the uh, Game Pass for Xbox, Xbox Live. The, the Xbox Game Pass. has it, It's totally... Right now, if you have an Xbox One, um, if you have Xbox Live, or if you don't, there's no reason not to get a Game Pass. It's right. like 15 bucks a month. You have Game Pass, it's Xbox the, Live, and Game Pass for Windows 10. It's like if it's you like have a Windows Netflix 10 PC and Xbox, yeah. Which, granted, I don't like that idea going forward because it's already started where EA's already got theirs. Yeah. Fucking Capcom, I think, is talking about starting one. Ubisoft is talking about starting one. It's like you don't have enough games. Stop it. But we're gonna enter. We all have like seven games. What are the fuck? And all of do? them are live services. Like, all like, of them are live fucking services competing like, against each other. It would be like Blizzard coming on. It makes no goddamn you sense. Can play our games and they're all seven. Tom Clancy. You can play our games for seven dollars a month. You only have twelve games. Yeah. Like fuck you. It's it's really frustrating, and I'm worried about that. Oh, and you still have to pay for World of Warcraft. But right now. <laughs> Right now, I like Game Pass. I'm worried because we get in that situation where we have Netflix, Hulu, Disney, uh, Warner Brothers, streaming ABC, services. yeah, and like, content like me, being gated to different streaming services. Yeah, like like for me, I've gone back to a point where I'm, you know, acquiring things. Yeah, because I don't care to like. Oh, I, I have to have eight subscriptions to watch one fucking thing. Exactly, like, it's done. bullshit. So I really hope that's not where we end up. It's probably where we'll end up. Because we don't, Reasons. we can't have nice things. We can't. Right now, though, it is awesome. It is totally fucking worth it. Uh, and I don't even have Windows 10 right now because <laughs> fuck Windows 10. Um, you know, but, though, like with this, I can't even be sure it's Windows 10. I don't care. You know, like but that's one of those things. I don't know I what's enjoy, wrong. I enjoy having access to a fuckload of games where I can play whatever I want. And the fact that new game, and Metro Exodus only came out a few months ago. Right, And right. that's a third-party game. So right. they get, like, third-party games pretty quickly. Any first-party games are going immediately to it. Question. Yeah. You can play Exodus on your Xbox One with the Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Is Exodus also available on the Windows 10 PC? As far as I know, well, actually, I don't know because that one, that one with the ex, uh, uh, I mean, exclusivity. That, yeah, that's yes, my question. So I don't like, know. Like it's available here, and yeah. this same service is also given to you here. My understanding right? is so, everything available on that service is available on Windows 10, but that would be the game that I yes, don't know. That, 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 I, have yeah. to, I might have to check that. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah, like like that's just a question I have because that, I'm going to play any of the Metro games, yeah. it's going to be on my PC. Because obviously, I don't... I mean, I've said yeah. it before, I've said it again, I don't have an Xbox One, I have no interest in buying an Xbox mm-hmm. One, I don't have a PS4. I have a small interest in buying a PS4 because there are a handful of titles I'd like to play, mm-hmm. like Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, It has a lot Blood more Born. of those exclusives that right. they want to the play. The actual, legit exclusives, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I'm not bashing either system. If you play on those games, fucking do it. Keep going. I love you for yeah. it. But, like, I'm a PC player. That's what I've done for the last fucking eight years. I've tried to play games on PC if I'm able to. Um, so, yeah, like, I, that, that would be a question I'd have because I might, I might be a game for something like that. I might be up for that. You know, 15 bucks a month and I can play Metro Exodus or fucking Crackdown 3 or what the fuck ever is on Xbox. I like Forza. I love phrasing games. 
Maybe I'll play Forza. Let's see. I'll start your are you one. are you checking? Yeah, I wanted to because that actually that's a good question, right? Um, Amazing question. Yeah, it made me now on Game Pass. Blah, blah, because blah. of course, like and on, Windows PC. So yeah, so you can play Exodus on PC through so you Windows can play Live through Windows or uh, whatever the fuck this whatever their called. Game Pass is connected to on their because CI like and, there is no games from Windows Live anymore. Um, so it, yeah. it, like they they wiped it out. It's the game. St- I think it's the Microsoft Windows Game Store. Oh, uh, the the Microsoft Store. Microsoft. Well, it, or it's the Xbox One Store. It's something like that. Well, like okay, so I they've changed the name like six times. They unified it last year, I think, yeah. under just the Microsoft Store. Yeah. They rebranded it last year. I, I think it was last year. It could have been earlier this year, but as the Microsoft Store. And so I'd be willing to bet PC, now it's listed under Game Pass. It's not listed under the Microsoft Store. Well, I imagine it would be. Or you go to the store first and then go to Game Pass. Right, because uh, like there that. is the Xbox app, mm-hmm. but the Xbox app, I don't know. Who it doesn't cares. matter. Yeah. Either way, it is. So you can get it on PC through Game Pass. See, that's interesting because, cool. you know, fucking Epic wants to flex his it's Fortnite dick muscles and go yeah. oh we got it first we got it only oh, that's something we didn't talk about that shit eating fuck face well we can say claiming that. that uh claiming that he's doing it for the good of everyone and we won't do this anymore no your your corporation's going to stop making money it stopped the profitable no fuck you fuck you asshole all right guys <laughs> we gotta <laughs> end it guys. there uh i i really need to fucking like smoke some weed or something i don't know because uh, I'm I'm still very very much frustrated. Yeah. Um. But well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, you know, we we somehow got an hour and so out. We of made that. it Woo-hoo. without Audacity <laughs> crashing and complaining that it's 1.8 percent CPU use. It's just too much. I don't fucking get it. Listed episode 100, even though we've done more than 100 episodes. <laughs> I, this is the official. Well, yeah, it's the official 100th yes. episode because, like, the other episodes to get us to 100 were side episodes or mini episodes or specials or something. So we can't count those, right? So this is episode numbered 100. Yeah. Uh, ep- uh, so there we go. Numbered episode. We 100. did it. We did it. We stuck with something. Uh, so we hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, you know, check us out on all of our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, what, Patreon. Go throw us a buck. Get your name in our credits. Maybe we'll give uh, shout outs or make fun of you. Whatever. And uh, that's it. You know, download, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> For the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's it, I'm done. Yes.